Government launches the first work in job center for employment opportunity. Gambia Education Ministry discuss new mode of operation for schools. Amid fears of new wave of COVID, thousands of people attend Senegalese Magal Tuba. These and more coming up on your way at Gam on Gambia 24. Stay tuned. Welcome back. This is the Gambia 24. I am your presenter, Mariama Cham, and now the news in detail. The government of the Gambia, through the Minister of Trade, has launched the first walk-in job center to create opportunity for young Gambians looking for employment services. The job center project is sponsored by the International Organization for Migration through a project named Bridging Together Youth, Diaspora and Local Authorities for an integrated approach to promote employment and address irregular migration in the Gambia. More in this report. Nearly 240,000 Gambians are unemployed according to the 2018 Labor Force Survey. An additional 52,000 people are expected to lose their jobs due to the coronavirus pandemic according to government data. Many young Gambians have lost their lives in deserts in the western and northern parts of Africa and the Mediterranean Sea. Those people said they lacked job opportunities at home as a result, embarked on deadly journeys in search of greener pastures, often to help themselves and their families live better lives. As part of efforts to keep the youth at home, the Gambia's Ministry of Trade, with the help of the United Nations Migration Agency, IOM, have on Wednesday launched the first physical job center in Fajara, about 14 meters from the capital, Banjul. Nyalombaro, Commissioner of Labor, said he was delighted that the center will provide job opportunities for those seeking jobs. The purpose of the job center is to provide facilities for employment under career counseling, services to job seekers in general and others. The center will provide opportunities for capacity building, of course involving training to job seekers on uh, writing of applications and the uh, curriculum feature. Uh, for, for the jobs, especially the returnees. And uh, who will also have internet access to labor market information system on job availability to help them in search of jobs. Between 2009 and 2018, the Gambia recorded more than $1.4 billion in remittances, according to an August 2019 report by the online news site Kirfatu. Remittance is the third largest contributor to the Gambian economy alongside agriculture and tourism. On Wednesday, Fumike Nagano, IOM's chief of mission in the Gambia, explains that the high value of remittances from the diaspora, which is up to 20% of GDP, can even generate more if properly utilized. It is estimated that close to 10% of Gambian nationals reside abroad. This substantial number of Gambian diaspora is responsible for making the Gambia one of the countries that receives some of the highest volume of remittances relative to the gross domestic product GDP. Making the Gambia second only to Mauritius in Africa, for instance. This often cited example, however, needs to be taken in perspective. The very fact that the so far unmanaged migration, singularly characterized by the backway phenomenon, has nonetheless accounted for close to 20% of the country's GDP should give us pause to reflect on what can truly be achieved if we manage it properly. According to the 2018 Labor Force Survey, a good number of men and women in the Gambia between the age of 15 and 64 are discouraged job seekers. These unemployment persons are not seeking jobs because they feel that they lack proper qualifications or that there is no suitable work available. Usman Sane, head of League Employment Service Unit, said the new job center will help these young people to acquire jobs based on their qualifications. You know, if you look at the, the 2018 Labor Force Survey, uh, it, it revealed that you know the Gambia has a high unemployment and then underemployment, and then it also said that discouraged workers people. There are a lot of people who are discouraged from searching job because one reason, primary reason for people being discouraged from serving job is like if you are not connected. You know, you cannot get job. 
Yeah, and this is something that we want to make it a history. We want people to forget about that. The job center is situated at the Labor Department office in Fajara. The place is renovated at the tune of over $1 million, according to Mr. Sane. It has a parlor fitted with computers for capacity building purposes, two toilets, a room for job applications review, and another room for reviewing confidential applications. Youth unemployment is still an unsolved problem in the Gambia, and even whereas people are able to find jobs, salaries are less as $1,500 a month because of a bag of rice. Reporting for African News, I am Maria Macham. A first-time job opportunity there for job seekers. Now the Gambia recorded new, no new COVID-19 cases on Wednesday following 39 Following 38 new laboratory tests, the country has not recorded any new deaths either. And results for, and results for post mortem samples collected returned negative, according to the Minister of Health. The 163rd National Situation Report released by the Health Ministry indicated that the 38 new laboratory tests were the lowest tests conducted in several weeks. Meanwhile, two new COVID-19 patients recovered and got discharged from treatment centers. The country currently has 46 people in quarantine, 1,261 active cases, and a crude case fatality ratio of 3.2%. So far, the Gambia has 3,613 confirmed cases, including 117 who died from the coronavirus. Moving on, hundreds of thousands of people have descended on the Senegalese city of Touba to celebrate the life of the founder of the Moody Dulai sect, Sir Ahmed Bamba, amid concerns of a possible outbreak of a new wave of the coronavirus in the Senegambia region. Let's take a listen to this report. Despite the global coronavirus pandemic still restricting movements and social gatherings, pilgrims flooded the holy city of Touba where about one million people are already resident. With coronavirus ravaging Senegal, the country has so far recorded 15,000 cases, of which 12,000 recovered and 312 died. The Touba pilgrims rest their hopes in God for protection from the pandemic. <laughs> If you believe in God, you shall not fear the coronavirus. You shall only fear God. He brought the pandemic here. We came here with our faith and a big heart. We are really proud of that. The annual gathering brings together more than 4 million Muslim followers of the late Sheikh from West Africa and other parts of the world. One pilgrim concerned with the spread of the coronavirus said people in the city should follow the guidelines against the virus, but it will not stop people from living their lives. We have to follow the instructions that God gave to us, the Muslim people, in particular the Murids. We shall respect the measures and keep on living. We cannot pause our lives because of it. It is something God spread on the planet and we have to entrust our Creator. Fears have been raised about the possibility of a new outbreak of the coronavirus as millions converge at the city of Tuba. On Sunday, the Gambia government said in a statement that it was discouraging intending pilgrims from attending the grand celebrations in honor of the share. But the weak implementation of border control means the government can't stop pilgrims from leaving Gambia for Senegal. Reporting for our African News, I am Maria Macham. Now that story from Tuba will take us to our first commercial break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned.
Welcome back. The government of the Gambia, in partnership with the World Food Program, is to support citizens with food provisions worth $399 million in the second phase of the coronavirus relief on to vulnerable families. The relief package is meant to complete the previous one that could not meet up the required number of beneficiaries, Amatore Fires in this report. A 700 million COVID relief fund in April wasn't enough. It failed to cover the targeted 84% of the population, the majority of whom are living in poverty. Gambia government restrictions aim at curbing the spread of the virus, shut down businesses and markets for farmers, severely disrupting lives and livelihoods. Over the weekend, President Adam Barrow told a gathering at a road inauguration at Kalen Village in the Sutra River region, additional funds have been secured for distribution by the government and World Food Program. Let him know that our vision and mission are for the Gambia. Let him know that I have procured some money together with World Food Program. The Gambia government provides $224 million and World Food Program provides $175 million. And we have put these together and we will use it to buy rice and distribute it to the entire country. President Barrow also said rural Gambians will continue to benefit from the NAFA Quick, a cash distribution initiative for vulnerable families affected by the impact of the pandemic. On farming, the president promised farmers that they will have enough fertilizer for the next cropping season. He also promises that the government will buy their nuts. We will buy groundnut and it would not be on credit basis. And in the price, every 100 will add 12% increment on it this year. The coronavirus pandemic ravaged the Gambia's health and economic sectors and compelled the government to raise up to $500 million from the budget to tackle the virus. The country currently has 117 people who died from the virus from a pool of 3,613 confirmed cases. More than 1,000 people are under treatment as of Tuesday. For iAfrica TV, I am Omar Ahmad Toure. That's another uh, food package relief from government for vulnerable families. Now, the Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education on Wednesday held conversations with stakeholders at the headquarters in Banjul ahead of the reopening of schools. The conversation referred to as Bantaba was meant to address education stakeholders on the new mode of operations as schools resume on the 14th and on the 28th of October with COVID-19 guidelines. More in this report. At Wednesday's meeting in Banjul, the Minister of Basic and Secondary Education, Claudiana A. Cole, said that as of the current budget, the government is spending about $777 million on basic education. She said she was appealing to parents to do their quota in complementing the government's effort in rendering basic education to Gambian children. And it is costing government $777 million a year. Just one year. That's the recurrent budget. So you see how much government is spending. For those people who did not know that uh, government is spending so much, I think it's a good thing that we begin to appreciate the responsibility that government is carrying in educating the young people of this country. And so, parents should also learn to do their bit, because government cannot do it all. Cole also said parents should provide face masks to their children, as the wearing of face masks will be mandatory when schools open on the 14th and 28th of October, respectively. Ibrahim Jeng, a student of SL Senior Secondary School, agreed. Jeng said the face masks are necessary to protect students from contracting the virus. As they uh, tell our parents to provide face masks for us, you know, it's not something that is costly or difficult to find. You know, as far as they can provide uniforms, schools, uh, uniform shoes, bags, and other things. You know, face masks is just something very simple to have to protect yourself from the outbreak of coronavirus. So, as they go to the tailor to for so our uniforms and other things, they can just ask him to. Uh, so a uh, fix mask for us because they are not going to buy it. So it's not it's not a difficult fact that if our parents are to provide face masks for us, it's fine. 
the interim chairperson of the Gambia Teachers Union Young Platform, Alaj B. Sama, said all COVID-19 safety precautionary guidelines must be in place before teachers return to the classroom to teach. Sama said the safety of teachers will not be compromised. Oh, one key issue, like I alluded to when I spoke to them at the Bandaba, is the fact that every precautionary measure about the COVID-19 must be put in place uh, before uh, teachers are uh, able to return to the classroom. Like I said, in as much as we want to uh, go out there and teach the kids, we have to ensure that the, the safety of our teachers are well taken charge of. And like I said earlier on, we are not compromising the plight of our teachers. Every precautionary measure must be put in place before we are able to return to the classroom. It has been the wish of many for schools to reopen in order to ensure a more effective learning environment where students can effectively interact with their teachers. In order to enable this and assist schools with their day-to-day -day operations, it is important to adopt and diligently implement action to hold the spread of COVID-19 in the community and in the schools. Reporting for IFICA TV, I am Ibrahim Akebi Sonko. Well, that's all we have for you in today's edition of Gambia 24. Do join us for more news on www.iafrica.tv. Bye-bye from now. Have a good night.